Hi, I am Lika Guhathakurta uh, from NASA headquarters and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, a program scientist. And this talk is on behalf of the entire uh, FDL team. Space has vast amount of data from decades of missions and the amazing opportunity to apply AI and deep learning and machine learning in particular to that data in new ways. There are discoveries right before us that can be gleaned from that data that are beyond the capacity of our mammalian senses. So we established the Frontier Development Lab with NASA and the SETI Institute and leaders in commercial AI and commercial space to work on problems in space science, space exploration, but also challenges of relevance uh, to all humankind. This particular slide is an early example of FDL AI demonstration. Um, what, uh, we are um, basically at a point in our civilization where we can now digitize anything we want. It could be DNA, a face, or a fragrance. And once it is um, math and we have labeled examples, we can train a neural net. This is the Meteor Learner, basically. Uh, here, we are loading um, samples of meteorites into a probability matrix. This matrix is essentially learning um, um, from um, figuring out what a meteorite looks like. Meteorite is different from rock. They are sharp in uh, jagged and not softened by erosion and have a fusion crust. They are black. And so this is something we can teach a neural net to recognize. And this is an example of a project we did and did exactly that. We taught this learner or inference model, this probability bin to do useful work. In this case, we are training neural net to recognize meteorites, which generally look different from rocks. And after 26,000 images of meteorites, the neural net is trained. It becomes an inference model or learner. But let, uh, uh, let us, in this context, use the phrase probability matrix to kind of take away the myth of AI. As this just reminds us that this is just a mathematical problem. It's just fancy uh, statistics. Then we put the CNN on a drone and said, can we go out in field and can we detect meteorites? Once you have your inference model, you can really let it loose on the real world. This is a meteorite drone basically um, uh, looking for the difference between um, uh, meteorites versus uh, rocks. And if the a drone is looking for pristine meteorite falls, which if you can get them before they oxidize or the professional collectors get there, will allow researchers to determine the composition of the asteroid family that it uh, belongs to. At asteroids tend to cluster. So if you knew where this meteorite came from, you can perhaps determine the composition of that family of asteroids. And in this slide, we are showing that the inference model was very successful. It found 16,000 possible, but also found the actual meteorite placed there by us with only two false positives. And so here we are. If we have trained data and you can train one of these learners, you can really do some cool stuff. So you can train a neural net to learn to recognize a digitized input with a high degree of probability, right? Just statistics. We can't see all of this data simply because of the limitations of our senses. Uh, and AI tools are really quite amazing. Where it gets really interesting is when you don't have training data or you're working with 3D or multidimensional data, which is why this GIF is really quite amazing. Once an inference model is trained, it can see things that human can't with their limited um, million senses. Space science, um, and deep learning. There are a few reasons why uh, machine learning, deep learning, and AI fit so well with space science. One of them is space science is data heavy with petabytes of data. And as Andrew Neung 
one of the thought leaders of AI pointed out a while ago that deep learning just keeps on pushing envelope to the right, give it more data and give, it gets more accurate and happier. When properly architected, the efficacy of deep learning systems continue to improve with more data long after statistical models have uh, plateaued. Another reason is that space science isn't just data heavy, you could call it discovery um, heavy. It literally is a domain where we are physically exploring now frontiers. We are going places we have never been before. We are seeing things we have never seen before. We are collecting data. We need to make sense of, and we need the discovery component of deep learning, the way it can figure things out for itself in a creative way. Now, creative is perhaps too strong a word. Let's use an example. This is a six-legged robot designed to go over a rough terrain, perhaps better than a wheeled rover might do on, say, the surface of Mars. But if you don't, um, you don't want these poor people programming how to move each limb of this robot, just have a, a DL model to let the robot figure it out for itself. In this case, it was given a very simple metric, go forward, but touch the ground as little as possible, which is you know, a pretty good proxy for efficiency. The gait will be efficient if you don't touch the ground with your feet more than you need to. It was set in motion and initially tended to be a little bit weird in its movement. The group went off uh, to lunch, came back and found the system very proudly saying, I have achieved 100% efficiency. I'm not touching the ground with my feet at all. Let me, you've seen this in the movie now, right? Now you laugh and it is funny because it's like a kid and that is the point. No preconceptions, no bias, voracious appetite for data, astounding ability in terms of throughput to try billions of different combinations. That is the kind of supercharging we need to turn AI onto space science with phenomenal results. And it's on that basis that the Frontier Development uh, Lab was uh, launched. NASA gathers approximately two gigabytes of data every 15 seconds from over 100 currently active missions. We do this every hour, every day, every year, and the collection rate is growing exponentially. Handling, sorting, and managing this data is a massive challenge. Our data is one of our most valuable assets and its strategic importance in our research is huge. And this is the context in which, again, uh, FDL is born. What if AI meets space science? And what we have here is um, uh, really the partnership between um, NASA, the SETI Institute, um, and uh, leaders in commercial AI and commercial space. We are now witnessing an inflection point, however, where AI promises to become a tool for discovery with the ability to process vast amount of heterogeneous data, as well as massive amount of data collected over decades, allows us to re revisit the physics-based models of the past to better understand underlying principles and basically radically improve time to insight. So the question is, why partner with the Silicon Valley? I mean, this is kind of a picture from uh, NVIDIA's, uh, you know, who also has been a big partner in this effort. Well, some of the reasons are GPU power outstripping Moore's law. We know that we live in the petascale era of data. Developing algorithm is just 5% of task. Developing inference model is costly. You know, we get, over $1 million worth of donated compute time from our Silicon Valley partners uh, and uh, along with expertise uh, in uh, uh, models. So there are many reasons uh, why uh, FDL started in the Silicon Valley. Uh, very quickly, I just want to say that uh, in um, 
February 11, 2019, White House issued an executive order on maintaining American leadership in artificial intelligence. And without going through all of the points, all I want to say is FDL in its fifth your program has been successfully addressing many of these guidelines and meets many of the program objectives. Little bit of history. Um, as I mentioned, FDL is a public-private applied AI research partnership between NASA, the SETI Institute, and leaders in commercial AI, private space, academia, and partner space agencies. It is five years old. Uh, FDL has developed a proven formula for producing excellence in applied AI research over uh, rapid timescales with a focus on AI explainability to match the quality expectations of the space industry. FDL has produced over 20 peer reviewed journal papers and been accepted to you know, over 40 scientific conferences, multiple articles in the science press. FDL results are being deployed on various projects. FDL is currently based at NASA Ames Research Center and hosted and administered by the SETI Institute. The formula has attracted attention of partner space agencies like ESA, Canadian Space Agency, Luxembourg Space Agency, with more to come. And of course, there's interest from other NASA centers. Why FDL? It's a good question to ask. AI is evolving quickly. The revolution was started by the application of neural nets to large quantities of pre-labeled data, also known as supervised deep learning, in 2012. These methods are now mainstream, as you know. The state of the art is now looking towards sparse or unlabeled data, also known as unsupervised deep learning or machine learning. And how to explain the uncertainty of the results. This is known as explainability and a key part of determining the veracity and usefulness of any AI, especially from the scientific point of view. Although deep learning is being democratized, producing excellence um, that is really bias-free and trustworthy results is increasingly difficult, requiring multifaceted and sophisticated teams and a deep understanding of how to use the newest techniques. This is where FDL provides unique value and opportunity for uh, space science and exploration, I believe. Why a dedicated lab? Um, several reasons, really. ML is expensive. Data scientists at PhD level are difficult to recruit, and average salaries are over 140K US dollars per year. Market rate for senior scientists can go up to 1 million US dollars. Moreover, compute costs limit experimentation and ambition. That's a huge point. Machine learning has large failure rate. Data scientists cite the following for project failure, not knowing the data, poor management, lack of good questions, all of these beg for structure. The unsupervised learning gap. AI tools have been maturing quickly and most scientists are now familiar with the basic uh, get results with off the shelf tools using well tagged data, which is supervised data. FDL's team approach allows teams to tackle far more sophisticated AI workflows. That's kind of very significant. The explainability gap. Similarly, while it may be possible to develop a compelling demo, machine learning often fails in the real world due to procedural errors, unintended variables and biases. Understanding what works and why is key. And FDL kind of brings uh, partners that contribute at all levels, high-end compute GPU, CPU resources from the partners, software and advanced AI ML algorithms, team mentors, subject matter expertise, speakers, facilitation, and funding. So this kind of makes this whole uh, approach to a dedicated lab really important. So this is following on on the same thread, basically, uh, what are the kind of problems that is most suited for FDL? Problems that require innovation in data pipelines, um, basically um, training, 
problems that use very large data sets, that is significant training and engineering costs, which is you know, time, capital, investment, problems that require integration of numerous AI tools to create AI workflows, or problems that require high degree of confidence in the outcome, or problems that have sparse or dynamic data or require transfer learning. And you can see a whole host of issues being addressed uh, here that are very applicable to the world of science and space science in particular. This is the FDL timeline or the event horizon, if we may call it that. Uh, this is uh, the SETI Institute in partnership with Trillium facilitates the public-private partnership by acting as a hub between space agency, academic and commercial partners. Our significant commercial partners to date has been uh, Google Cloud and we got started with NVIDIA. How does FDL work? FDL tackles knowledge gaps in space science by pairing machine learning experts with heliophysics, astrophysics, astrobiology, earth science, and planetary science researchers for an intensive eight-week research sprint held in the summer um, break of the academic year. All the journey um, from challenge definition through to finish result, which is the, the creating the tech demo and training algorithm and data product takes 12 months. Interdisciplinary, very important. Four person teams of PhD and postdoc level researchers address tightly defined science challenges that are informed by knowledge of what's possible in ML. Mentors who are subject matter experts provide support to the teams and drive research quality. External um, and partner experts, special guests um, and visits to partner labs contribute to the understanding of the problem and provide a community of expertise that drives excellence and that community of expertise is growing. FDL's format encourages rapid iteration, key because this world is moving very rapidly, and prototyping to create outputs with meaningful application to the space program with substantial compute resources provided by FDL's commercial partners who have expressed ongoing commitment. This combination of curated challenges, close mentorship, community of expertise, and an emphasis on rapid prototyping has ensured a high success rate for FDL. As such, FDL has demonstrated how structured interdisciplinary problem solving, radical collaboration methods, and partnering with commercial organizations with relevant expertise can be really useful to NASA science and technology goals, but other agencies and academia just as well. This, in a way, is showcasing, um, you know, um, the FDL uh, program that has been supported uh, by NASA to a large extent, extent with our commercial partners. And you, you, you can see that all the topics FDL has tackled so far kind of falls in the NASA strategic uh, goal, understand the sun, earth, solar system, and universe. And in that, within the science mission directorate, we have three components, discovering the secrets of the universe, searching for life elsewhere, safeguarding and improving life on earth. And you can see your favorite uh, science discipline really represented in this um, uh, pie chart. This is just another way of uh, capturing uh, you know, the FDL uh, impact uh, on uh, the overall science and what is done here. We've taken the same topics we have undertaken up to 2019. I have not gone into 2020. And then you see the FDL research result, you know, discovery with multidimensional data, workflow optimization, forecasting and prediction, decision intelligence, anomaly detection, autonomous systems. You can go to the FDL website and can find really details on any of this topic. And then I would like to say that FDL is really building crucial AI keystone capability uh, for uh, NASA. And you can see the FDL 
research result on top, like I showed in the previous uh, chart, and then the strategic capabilities for NASA that it leads to. Uh, discovery with multidimensional data leads to science breakthrough, workflow optimization kind of leads to radical cost and time savings, you know, classification at scale, forecasting and prediction leads to situational awareness, uncertainty reduction, virtual instruments, decision intelligence, it is rapid assessment, improved strategic decision making capability, anomaly detection, safer system, this can be applied anywhere, autonomous systems, you know, onboard AI plus worms, auto calibration, I don't have time to go into this, all these details, but I'm giving you a sample, basically. And, and then really, after five years, uh, what is the FDL proven formula for AI success? The top of the line is really FDL is interdisciplinary. Tailored teams of PhDs and world-class ML mentors are curated around a challenge to drive excellence, which leads to higher quality. FDL creates laser focus. Silicon Valley sprint methods, culture, and vast donated compute allow rapid iteration key to ML progress and so speed to, to results. FDL is about partner expertise. Commercial, academic, and space agencies partners combine to create a unique envelope of expertise that massively increases challenge success, raises quality, and lowers cost. That is the success model for FDL. And now, I'm going to switch tune. I would let you uh, see this movie again uh, created by FDL uh, before I really talk about some of the uh, science that uh, and uh, forecasting that we have been able to do with Frontier Development Lab over the last three years. So this is a multidimensional data to begin with in 2017, I, you know, we had to be sure that AI can do what we need. So we took this multidimensional data problem and one of our first case basically to test AI efficacy. The team built an AI model called String, Solar Terrestrial Interactions Neural Network Generator to look at the interaction between the Earth's geomagnetic field and solar wind, which is measured by the KP <clears throat> index, uh, most of you know. So what was the Sting uh, discovery? This um, basically Sting does what AI models do and learn to predict what the KP index is going to do three hours in advance based on solar wind data at L1, which is pretty awesome. But it also did something else, uh, which is what was fascinating. The list here shows all of the data gathered in order of importance of the model. What is really, you know, like your magnetic field, uh, proton density, etc. But what is interesting is that the neural net elevated small unremarkable stations on the equator shown in orange, showing that the Earth's magnetic field bunches around the equator, which the scientists know a phenomenon called the magnetospheric green current, but the machine learning extracted important physical parameters without prior knowledge of the system. And to that extent, it is an example of an AI derived discovery. Now we have shown that we can predict KP, but uh, can we integrate uh, solar data, geomag and ionospheric data to predict something that affects our daily technology? Um, and um, that was the next challenge. So the Complex nonlinear nature of Sun Earth interaction makes predicting space weather effects really difficult. To date, physics based models do not make predictions on useful spatial and temporal scales. 
one potential solution to this channel is a uh, challenge is to uh, use a uh, data driven approach to this end we take into account the various aspects of the sun earth system and that's what we are looking at here combining all the data applying these data sets to various machine learning techniques we show it is possible to make predictions on space weather uh, effects how exactly does the space weather driven disruptions occur or how does space weather cause gps disruptions so the global positioning system works by means of ground based receivers communicating with satellites via radio signals these radio signals travel through the charge portion of the earth's atmosphere the ionosphere the ionosphere is a region of the atmosphere that is highly linked to space weather uh, variability and disturbances in the ionosphere can affect the ability of these radio signals to propagate between receivers and that's what you're going to see you know there is scintillation in your uh, degraded performance or um, there is total loss of uh, GPS sensor. What's really interesting is that um, the same physics that leads to these fluctuations in ionospheric electron density also causes scintillation uh, that cause scintillation also manifest themselves as the aurora. So auroras are correlated with GPS uh, disturbances. And this was a really new area that uh, the team went into. Discrete structures in aurora uh, are more important for GPS disturbances. The bigger the image, the more significant basically are the uh, GPS um, disturbances. And so the team actually uh, were able to forecast disturbances one hour in advance, 50% better than previous methods. And uh, there are all kinds of other cool things, but I'm running behind, so I'm going to go fast. This is really cool. You should be reading the screen. This is, you know, what we did is um, uh, SDO lost a sensor in 2014 that uh, measured solar spectral irradiance, which is really a crucial input for uh, determining kind of the environment in which uh, satellites uh, reside. And so the goal was, can we take SDO, AIA, UV images and combine them with the uh, earlier data taken simultaneously with MEGS a sensor and then create a proxy uh, or uh, virtually resurrect the mix sensor data. And we were successful uh, beyond um, our wildest dream. So in a way, as you're watching this, I'd like to tell you, imagine you've got an orchestra playing and at some point, for some reason, partway through one of the musicians playing the violin just stopped and walked off. Could you know enough about the way that music was playing to fill in the gap and recreate what you think that musician would have played if that musician was still sitting in the chair. That's sort of what we did. We created a virtual instrument. Uh, expanding the capabilities of NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, we had already had a AI ready data set and basically uh, we use that to kind of create uh, other synthetic data set using the same data set. Uh, we looked at um, auto calibration of SDO Eve data. Uh, these are going to be very important for our future space missions. Here, we actually did what is called super resolution, that is try to create a homogeneous set of magnetogram data. A lot of these are ground-based, a lot of these are space-based, and the question, and there's high level of inhomogeneities. If we had long database, we could do so much more science. So this was just trying to super resolve. Um, in the next chart, I'll show you, uh, uh, super resolve the data between um, one of the ground-based instrument, gong input data, and you can see the machine learning gong output data. There is tremendous potentiality here. This is in a nutshell, kind of giving you the various components of what we have achieved, deployed AI, published research, data product to start up from each of our uh, topics. 
power of partnership, AI is really changing the way we think about problems. I mean, Google and Cloud and NVIDIA are playing a tremendous part. FDL is interdisciplinary, that is the key. Data scientists don't know the pitfalls, domain scientists don't know the full toolbox. So we have to pair them up. Frontier development formula very clearly, I think we are uh, beginning to realize that AI is phenomenally powerful tool, as significant perhaps as the CPU. But again, it's another word for fancy statistics. We provide research talent, challenge plus data, and capacity plus capital. It is really a culture of where anything is possible. And I'd like to end with this remark from Stephen Hawking, who said, I think the 21st century will be the century of complexity. We have already discovered the basic laws that govern matter and understand all the normal situations. We don't know how the laws fit together and what happens under extreme conditions. There is no limit to the complexity we can build using those basic laws. And basically, I propose that we kind of start a grand challenge in space science, integration of the knowledge provided by the vast amount of data collected by NASA for the Earth system, the heliophysics system, the solar system, and the universe beyond, coupled with theoretical and computational models to understand and predict the behavior of the world we live in. Thank you.